We are looking at the grade 11 November prac exam from 2018 and this was from the Eastern Cape and we're dealing with question one. We are doing the second part 1.2. Now we are at uh, question 1.2 and so we are looking at the following question. So we are going to type in an RD number and then we've got to display a whole bunch of results about um, how often they can work and so on. So that's the gist of this question. If they're a school going age, then they can only work one weekday and week on one weekday and weekends. So one weekday, one weekend. So that's a school going person. Um, if they are younger than 16, then they are too young. So if they're younger than 16, they can't work too young to work. You must go back to school. And if you are 18 or older, then you can work weekdays every day on a weekday and one day on a weekend. Oh, that's a lot of work for them. Shame. Okay, so complete the code for this button, which requires you to type in the ID number, and we need to determine the days that the employee is allowed to work. So we're looking at trying to calculate the age. Now, they haven't specified this, so if you don't know this about ID numbers, which they should have maybe mentioned, is that that first two digits over there is the, um, the year of that person was born. So this person, 81, was born in 1981. That 11 was born in... I'm assuming 2011, and that is 01, which means they were born in um, 2001. Okay, so those are the details. So that's a bit uh, tricky. So they didn't explain that. So they haven't specified anything about um, uh, the month. So I'm not going to go into detail of the month. If you look at the mark allocation, it's only 60 marks. It's quite a bit we have to do. So I'm sure that we don't have to take the month into consideration. So the ID number consists of 13. Calculate the age. Assume that no one is older than 100 years. So we are in 2019 at the moment, or in this paper was done, 2018. So that means anyone um, that was as an 18 or 18 number or less, that obviously means that they're um, a... That's the age of the person that was 2018 or 2017 and so on. So that's what I'm assuming with this 100 years. So if we see, for example, that 11, we're not assuming that it's 1911 because that person would then be older than 100 years. Now, I'm going to just be honest with you. I've, I've looked at the, the memo for this and this part disturbs me a little bit with the way they've asked it. Um, the number must consist of 13 numerical characters, calculate the age in years only. Okay, so they've told us not to worry about the, the month there. But this part here, it's one line, but there, it's a very important line. The ID number must consist of 13 numerical characters. There's no mention of an error message that must appear if it does not have 13. It just says it must, con it must contain it. The reason why I'm upset with this, this line is because they haven't specified that that's actually what you must check as well. They haven't told us that if this happens, we must give, if it doesn't have 30 numerical characters, we must show a message. But if you look at the memo, it does. So unfortunately, when you get questions like this, you've got to look for these little finer details and hopefully look at the mark allocation to help guide you if that's something that they want. Um, so we are going to have to do this part and it's, a, it's tricky because a lot of people might have missed that and it's not that they can't do it, it's just that they didn't understand or the question wasn't well phrased. So yeah, the ID number must consist of 13 numerical characters each, so there must be 13 characters in there. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So we need to, I'm going to first do that part. I'm going to first check that there's 13 numbers and from there if that's all okay, then we can do this working out of the age, blah, blah, fish based stuff. Okay, so let's do that part first. So I want to go to the question there. We're going to click, click on that button and we're going to get the ID number from EDT ID. So that's the first part. Let's get our input. SID of type string. Let's keep it a string because it's nice to work with strings. Um, equals to EDT ID dot text. Let's keep it as a string. Okay, so. How do we check if it's got numerical characters? It needs to be 13 numerical characters. So we need to go through, uh, let's go through. Uh, so if we've got like a number like 8, 0, 11, 21, 5, 0, 4, 5, 6, 8, let's say that. We're going to go through each one and check each one is a, is a number. Okay, so I'm going to have a for loop that's going to go from 1 and I'm going to assume that we're going to go to 13. Okay, we're going to go to 13. Okay, 
So, and it must be 30. Okay, well, let's you see because they they haven't phrased it very well. Are they are they assuming that this could be a potential bad ID number? Because then it's not we're not going to if we find the first 13 characters and they're all good, then we can think that's legit. So oh, it's, it's it's actually very badly phrased. So let's assume that someone if someone gives something like that, that it must be wrong. So we're going to go till the length of whatever this ID is. And we're going to check each and every individual character. So we need an R variable. And we're going to make it an integer. Now what I'm going to do is we don't want any letters. Okay. So when we find something that's not a number, I want to flag this particular problem. So what I'm going to use is a technique using flags. I'm going to call a B flag of type Boolean. Now watch what I do here. This little, little trick here. I'm going to assume that everything is okay. Assume the ID number is legit. So assume it. And then we go through each and every character. And the moment we find a character that is not a number, then we go, hey, B flag is now false. And then we found, and then it remains false. So if I go, if I check each and every character and I can get through the last one, if I get to the last one and it's still, this B flag hasn't been converted to a true, to a false, then I know that it's past all the characters. I never convert it back to true. I just assume it's true. And then I only check if it's false. Now, how do I do that? Well, if, now, how do I check if each character is legit? Well, if SRD to get each character, that's how you get each character. Now, lots of techniques. We can check if it's in the following set. If it's, now, because we're dealing with strings, I can check that it's from naught to nine. Don't forget the noughts. A lot of people go from one to nine. Remember, noughts are number two. If SID is in that number, then obviously it's legit. But if it's not, so I want it when it's not that. So I'm going to put a not around it. If it's not that, that means if it's not one of those numbers, then we found a number that, or we found a character that is not a legitimate number. If that's true, then we must convert our B flag to a false and say, hey, we found a problem. This is the end of the for loop. If we get through the entire string and we haven't converted one of the B flag or the flea the <laughs> flea bag, the B flag once to false, then obviously it was true from the beginning to the end. Every single character is a legitimate number. Okay. So that is perfect for that case. There are other techniques. Um, you could also do something like this where it, I'll just write here. You could say um, S numbers, you could have a string with have all the possible numbers in it, like that. This is, I like to do this type of method. And over here, you could check if the position of each character inside of S numbers. So if it was a zero, then it would be a number one or a two. It would find its position in there. So if it's not, if it's equal to zero, if the position of the character in the S number string is a zero, that means that the character we're looking at, like an A, an A in that string would be zero. It, it means it, it found something that's not a number. You could do the same thing. That's a technique I like to use. You can use either one. Okay, so boom. We found, we get to this place. Now we want to check if B flag equals false, that means there are non numbers in my ID, but it also must be 13. So it mustn't be both, it could be either one. Or if SID is not equal to 13, or not SID, sorry, the length of SID, so it's got is not equal to 13, then we have a problem. Then what do we have? We have a problem. Show a message invalid ID else. We must do the other stuff. Do the other stuff here. Okay. Now remember when you're using or, your conditions must have brackets around them. There we go, brackets. Okay. So at the moment, it'll do nothing if it's a valid ID. If it's invalid, it'll show. Let's just test that. Let's see if it works. Okay. So whew, I hope this works. So let's go. So if I type in a invalid ID, how many characters is that? 
it's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. If I click on that, nothing happens, which means it passed. If I change it to one more character, they're all numbers, but it fails because it's not 13. And if I put an A in instead of a number, let's put an A over there. It's 13 characters, but there's a letter in there. Ah, oh, it seems legit. And if I put a whole bunch of them in, yeah, problem. Okay, so, whew, so that seems to work. I know, like all that code, just literally for that little line there. Hmm, not very well asked. But anyway, we'll move, we'll digress. We'll move on. We can't control that. Let's control what we can. Okay, now. We are at the stage that we know that the ID number is legit. We need to get those first two characters. We are assuming that no one is older than 100 years. So if those two characters is less, so there's two possibilities. It's either 2000 plus that number or it's 1900 plus that number. Like if it's 81, we're going to add 1900 to it to make it 1981. And if it's 11, we want to add 2000 onto it. So how do we know the difference? Well, if no one's older than 100 years, well, then we need to be... Um, basically, if the first two characters are 18, because we're doing the, 18, the 2018 paper, so I'm assuming they assume that as their, their 100 limit. So let's first extract the year. So the year, so we're first going to copy the first two characters. Oh, there's a lot of variables here. S uh, first two. Terrible, okay. And then I'm going to have a variable to work out the age. Our age, okay. So, watch what I do here. First things first. Hence the first two. Let's just copy those first two characters. Actually, I'm going to make it an integer because I want to use it as a number. I want to refer to it as a number because I want to see if it's less than or greater than. I can't do that if it was a string. So, let's make it a number. If the first two characters, and we're going to copy, copy from SID, Starting at one for two characters. Now that's a string, so we're going to convert it from a string to an int so that it goes into first two. So that will tell me the first two characters. Boom. Okay, now let's work, work out the age. If our first two is less than equal to 18, that means it's one, two, three, four, what are those? One of those. Then we know that we, then we're going to say our age is going to be the year 2000 plus this first two. So, for example, if it was 11, 110101, they were born the 1st of, the, of January 2011. If it's an 11, 11 is less than 18. So, we add 11 to 2000. So, the, so the age or the year that they were born was 2011. And it was minus today's date. So, we're going to say 2018 because this was the 2018 paper. Minus that to work out their age if that makes sense okay i know there's probably a better mathematical way you could probably said 100 and you could have probably said what 18 minus 11 that would have worked as well you could have done that as well but i'm just showing you the mathematics either ways would be fine if that's true okay else if we get to this stage then obviously the year would be 19 or more which means we're going to add a 19 which means the year they were born so we're going to take the 2018 minus the year they were born, which is 1900 plus the R first two. Okay, I think I've explained that part very badly. Let me just reiterate what I've done here. Okay, this over here works out the year they were born. So if they were born in, in if the first two uh, numbers are, or the first two digits are 11, then it's 2000 plus 11, they were born in 2011. To work out the age, we take the current year of this paper minus that age. But if it's greater than 18, that means they were, it was a 19 or a 20 or a 25. That means we're assuming that they're born in 1925 because those years haven't happened in the 2000s yet. So then we will take the current year minus their A, the, the date they were born, which is that 25 plus the 1900. So it's 1925. Okay, and that's got red lines in it because before and else, you can't have a semicolon. Okay, so hopefully that explains how we work out the age. So now that we know the age, ooh, it's a lot of work. Now that we know the age, now we can go, okay, if it's below 16, we do this. Too young to work. So let's do that. Okay, so we haven't cleared the memo control. So let's, or the rich edit, rich edit dot clear. 
So we are still in this end of the else part, this part here. So we are all doing this if the ID number is legit. So first thing, if the age is less than, does include 16. If they are younger than 16, so it means it doesn't include 16, it says younger. If they are younger than 16, then the rich edit dot lines dot add. Let's just put begins in. I like begins ends. I don't know why. I just like them. It makes it clearer for me. We are adding the words too young to work. Too young to work. If it's less than 16. Else, if the R age is less than equal to 18. If they are younger, if they, if they finish school or are older than 18, then they can work. Okay, so if it's between 16 and 18, so if they're 18 and less, 18 and 17 and 16, then they can only work one weekday and one weekend. Okay, so you might be asking, why am I checking if it's not great? Then well, because if I get to this stage of the if statement, I will, not, if it's, if it's not less than 16 when it gets if that's false it'll jump here so when i get to this stage i will know for a fact that it is at least greater than 16 so it'll be 17 or more and if it's less than or it's greater than so 16 or more if that's true put my begins and ends in then i want to display two things let's put it in let's copy paste it to make my life easier we want to say weekday times one Weekday times one. How did I want it? Yeah, that's what weekday times one. And then weekend. Okay, so that's if it's between 16 and 18. And if it's not that, then obviously it's going to be a number greater than 18. So that's the only other possibility. And if that's the case, we will copy that and paste that because we're going to do something very similar here. You see, copy and paste makes your life a little bit easier with typing. Weekdays times five. And instead of the word weekend, we're going to say uh, Saturday or Sunday with the all in capitals. Try and make it exactly like they wanted to display just to make sure that you don't lose marks for that. Whew, I think that's all. This has been a very long question. I'm not going to lie to you. Let's have a look. Let's run it. So we're going to put in ID number. We know that the ID number works. So if I put in this number, which is a legitimate ID number, this person was born in 1980. Um, in the 21st month, no, that's wrong. Let's put it 12. Okay. 1980. So that means they are perfect to work on weekdays. But if I make that into a 2001, which means in means I don't need the 2000, I'm just going to, sorry, not 2001, uh, in uh, 11, 2011, then that means that they are too young to work, is that right? So 18 minus 11, yep, that's too young to work, but they were born in 01, then that would be 17, which means they can work one day, on the, and there we go. Whew, that was a lot of work. So there's your 16 marks. Um, as I said, be very careful of these little tricks, and you well done for this. I hope you understand what I've just explained. Hopefully it's come across clearly. For the other videos of this exam paper, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and we will hopefully inform you whenever we post new videos. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.